Well, it's really great to be with you, and uh, I want to say thank you to all who organized the conference and all of you who came. Um, in the times that we're in, uh, these economic times, uh, it's, it's more important than ever for us as an organization to have the opportunity to be together, uh, to laugh and to learn and to network and to, uh, and to recognize one another, uh, and for the professional organizations of the University of Missouri Extension to get together. So it's great to be with you. As I said, uh, when I get finished, all of the hard questions Bev Coberly is going to come up and take care of. Uh, the other thing that I would say is that we've got uh, all of the cabinet members here, I believe, and, and uh, the program directors, uh, most of the program directors, and the regional directors. The, the program directors, I think, maybe are suffering from an H1N1 PD flu. Uh, we've got some of them that are kind of under the weather, but uh, some of them are here so, so that the, so that we, can get at, uh, we can get at the really tough questions that you've got. Uh, we'll try to do that. But I want to I start out by uh, just uh, uh, sharing this slide with you. You've, some of you, many of you, probably all of you have seen it before. Uh, uh, it's on your minds, budget, so I'm going to start with budget. And uh, uh, this is the reality, I guess, that we're in. And you'll note that about 06, FY06 sometime in there, uh, the budget, if you look at the two kinds of our, of our budget, the two buckets of our budget, if you please, the self-generated component and the appropriated component crossed. Uh, and so now we're operating in an environment uh, not unlike the rest of higher education, uh, that uh, the self-generated revenues of our organization are bigger than the appropriated funds. Uh, so I just I expect this to continue, and I think we just have to understand that uh, that that's the environment in which we operate. So let me let me talk about the budget uh, and break it down for you just a little bit. Uh, federally, uh, I said to the group this morning, um, I think this is the best federal budget I've had since I since I knew anything about federal budgets. I I think I probably worked in extension before it made much sense to worry about the federal budget. But in the new farm bill and on our federal budget, uh, our capacity funds, our, our base funds, our formula funds, if you please, are up 2.5%. That's a quarter of a million dollars more federal money uh, that will be coming to extension, which is uh, this is a good year for that to happen based on what the other parts of our appropriated budget are likely to, to be. Increases in, I said, the, the Smith Lever, B and C, increases in a uh, big percentage increase in, uh, in E extension an increase in the CIFAR program, an increase in the FNIP program, uh, and so overall a pretty nice increase in our federal budget. Uh, that's to be compared with where we think we are with our state budget. Uh, state budget, uh, as you know, is level, thank goodness, compared with uh, the 50 percent increase that we were faced early in the process last January. Uh, in, but in that flat budget for the state that we're currently in this fiscal year, about 10 percent of that is what they call stabilization stimulus money. And we know that statewide, at least half of those dollars won't be back next year. And so, uh, and you all, I think, have been seeing the same kinds of news that I have about, about state, uh, state income. The state government uh, collections are continuing to lag, they're continuing to be soft. And so I think we uh, realistic, realistically believe uh, that uh, in the coming year we're going to be down 5 to 10 percent, at least to start the conversation about the budget. I think the, the message that we got uh, uh, this last year in our budget excitement, as I sometimes call it, uh, is that we have the message just about right and a lot of awareness across the state. Uh, and we have to stay with that message, and that is that we have to treat MU Extension as a core component of the budget for the university. Uh, and if we do that, I think we'll be all right. At least we won't be cut disproportionately. If there is a cut to be made, we want it to be proportional to the rest of the core budget of the university. And I think we can expect it to likely be down uh, this coming year. Uh, I think we're in a pretty good position if we're, if we're looking at 5 to 10 percent cut. I think we're in a pretty good uh, position fiscally to be able to deal with that. Uh, we, you know, we, we're holding positions. We're selectively refilling positions. And so I feel pretty good about that if that's where we're at. Uh, the FY11 budget is going to be tough, and I think most people believe that the fiscal year 2012 budget is going to be even tougher. Uh, we're a lagging state and we, when we get into recessions, I'm told. 
and it's probably because the last recessions, at least, have all been uh, zero uh, employment growth recessions. We've kind of dug ourselves out without huge increases in growth and employment. And when your whole tax base is based on uh, income tax and sales tax, that's going to make it pretty tough for the recovery. So it's going to be pretty tough, uh, but I think the, uh, the attitude is that we need to make sure that we continue with the message about being a part of the core budget of the University of Missouri. Uh, local budgets, county budgets, some of you know better than I kind of where that is. I think the, the preliminary uh, feeling we got was that they were going to be soft. Uh, they were going to be level to down. Uh, we've actually had some early ones come in that have actually been a little better than we thought. Uh, but I think we expect that to be a so kind of a soft budget. Uh, uh, and probably FY12 likely will also be one of those kinds of soft budgets, just like the state economy. You know, the, I guess one of the big differences between these three uh, sets of budgets is that the federal folks can print more money. <laughs> and we can't do that at the other levels. So the, uh, the other big bucket, of course, is of, the, of, our, of, our, of our budget is generated uh, funds, and I want to talk about those. As I said, about 53% of the $99 million budget is self-generated fees. Contracts and grants, great potential for growth, and you all have been doing an outstanding job uh, generating those kinds of dollars. About 19, almost 20 percent of our budget uh, and growing. Uh, gifts, gifts were down a little bit this year as most uh, endowments and gifts were off in a recession, uh, particularly earnings on those, but we expect that to come back. In fact, we're even seeing a little bit of an uptick. I'm looking over here at Barb. And, making sure that I'm saying it's telling you the truth. But I think we really see that beginning to turn around, uh, and it'll likely be up uh, uh, year over year this coming year. Uh, and then we've talked a lot about fees for programs uh, and the need for those uh, and the, uh, the need to maintain those, to grow those, to help understand where we're at uh, in fees in terms of, uh, of that as a revenue source. As I said, you know, we, we really have been working on fees for programs, and I'll give you just a bit of an update on that. The big thing is to, is to leverage those funds. Uh, if you've got a, a growing picture, if you look at that, if you think about that initial chart, if you've got the, the, the nose up on that budget as it's going along, you can leverage the appropriated dollars better. We'll, we'll be up a little bit on appropriated dollars, perhaps, uh, depending on what happens statewide, but with that federal increase, we'll uh, our chances are, are good that they'll be up or, or level, depending on what the state cut might be, if there is one. Uh, but that really lets us, these kinds of funds really let us stretch those dollars, stretch those appropriated dollars with self-generated dollars, or stretch, uh, leverage one bucket of funds against the other. The other thing that it does is it diversifies revenue streams. If you look just at the last year uh, of our self-generated revenues, we are up significantly in grants. We were down in gifts, and we are up in fees. Now, most of those fees are fees for courses in continuing education right now. Some of them are for programs in, in extension in the field but uh, in, and in co-op extension. But, it, but what happened was our total revenue for the budget in self-generated was up because we had two up and one down. And that's the kind of importance I think this, this uh, lends itself to in terms of diversifying revenue streams. The process that we've been uh, talking about and we've been having meetings and trainings about is a three-year rollout process, letting people understand what we're hoping to do, uh, uh, understanding it better ourselves in terms of where we're, our capacity is for increasing fees, uh, measuring fees so that we can manage. You know, you can't manage that that you can't or won't measure, uh, and, uh, and to continue to look at that as a mix. One of the things we said and we'll continue to say is that we don't expect there to be fees for every program in extension. We're going to take a look at that, and program directors are working hard on an al analyzing that situation um, as we go. But it will be a very important component of our budget in a time when budgets are going to be pretty darn tough for the future, at least the next couple of years. Some of you have asked this question about uh, reorganization and the new farm bill, or what I might call the new alphabet soup. Uh, for the federal partner. Uh, October 1st, uh, in the new Farm Bill, CSREES, Cooperative State Research, Education, and Extension Service, became NIFA, the National Institute of Food and Agriculture. Now, that became a, that was all a part of this new Farm Bill 
all a part of a, of a farm bill funding for higher education that saw the kind of increase that I just explained to you in terms of capacity funds. And the biggest jump of all in the federal budget was competitive money. Uh, and the good news about that for us is that we're pretty well staffed to be very competitive for that competitive money in NIFA, the new National Institute. You can see there on the slide, uh, there, are, there are four sub-institutes, food production and sustainability, bioenergy, climate and environment, food safety, nutrition, youth and community development. Extension has a part to play in every one of those uh, and will. Uh, and uh, uh, we really expect uh, this kind of work to be, uh, to be important in both capacity, growing the base of our budget, as well as the competitive. The, uh, the new acronym for NRI, the National Research Initiative, is now AF uh, AFRI, the, the uh, Agriculture and Food Research Initiative. It's basically the NRI with more money uh, and more what we call integrated opportunities. Up to 30 percent right now will be integrated. That means grants applied for uh, will be given preference if they have two of the three, uh, research and education, research and extension, education and extension, teaching and extension. Those integrated grants are going are to be preferentially awarded. Fact of the matter is, the new director of NIFA told us, uh, some of us a, a while back, that he was really hoping that more than 30 percent, maybe all of the, uh, the competitive money, ought to be integrated, ought to be R and something, or E and something uh, in the mix. And so I suspect that integrated competitive money will be increasing as we move forward, which I think is good news. That's the biggest jump in the federal uh, appropriation to, to, uh, to extension and the experiment stations, that competitive, almost a a 50 percent, 60 percent increase, as I recall. Uh, new leadership for this new uh, institute. Uh, Dr. Raj Shaw is the new undersecretary for REE. He replaced Gail Buchanan. Some of you may remember Gail Buchanan was dean of Georgia for a number of years. He's the new undersecretary, and working with him is Dr. Roger Beachy, who's the new director of NIFA. Now, he may sound familiar to some of you. He's the former president of the Danforth Plant Science Center in St. Louis. Now, both of these guys, unlike Gail Buchanan, come to this leadership uh, of this new institute without a lot of background uh, in land-grant universities. Uh, and so we have an opportunity to train that person, and particularly Roger Beachy, who's kind of a Missouri person. Uh, and Tom Payne and David Baker and I are already kind of on Roger Beachy's list to bring him when he's back home uh, to Mizzou, uh, to the field, to help him understand integrated research and extension the total picture of extension. And I have to say, based on what I've heard from do about uh, Dr. Beachy early on, is that he's a good listener and he's a pretty good learner. So that's kind of the situation budget-wise and uh, organizationally on our federal piece that I wanted to share. Um, uh, Rhonda, tells, Rhonda Gibbler tells me that I'm not a Pollyanna, uh, and I don't want to sound like one. Uh, but I think we've got a pretty good situation today. I think we've got an increase in our federal budget. I think we've got a level-funded level state budget uh, and a pretty good situation currently in our counties. But you also saw what we thought was going to happen in 2011, 2012, particularly with the, with the state budget and, I suspect, with county. So it's clear that uh, we don't want to waste this crisis. And so I think we want to we want to work right now on doing some things that will change our organization during these times that will make us better. That will ultimately, I, I think, help us grow our organization. And so I want to talk about three key kind of related things that are just pretty much getting started uh, that uh, that you'll all be involved in as as we move forward. That's going to help. It's going to really, really help changes. Uh, it's, uh, it's an opportunity, I think, for us to seize this situation uh, and be better when we're finished. The first of these is strategic planning. Uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a process that's going on uh, two places in, in relationship to where Extension is. Uh, we're in the process of developing a new Mizzou strategic, advan uh, strategic plan uh, for the campus at the University of Missouri. Uh, I'm privileged to be on a 10-member uh, committee that's writing that right now, and uh, we had our 
Last meeting before it went to the Strategic Planning Committee for the university yesterday, uh, and so it's kind of out in draft form, beginning to be sort of looked at by some of the folks on campus. Uh, extension, and the, the word extension and the word land grant is in that strategic plan, at least at this stage, and I'm very happy about that. Uh, and we'll have an you'll have an opportunity and we'll have an opportunity to tweak it as we move forward. Uh, but sort of at the same time, the Tiger Leadership Round uh, Table, the TLR group, has been at work looking at a, at a strategic plan for extension. And uh, that, too, is kind of at the stage where it's sort of been drafted. And uh, TLR, I think, probably earlier, maybe yesterday, talked some about the communications plan on getting feedback on that plan. And so that strategic planning uh, process for extension is working right along at about the same time uh, as the strategic plan for the campus. Both of the strategic plans, both the one for the university and the one for uh, extension, uh, have involved in them, have as a component of them, this business that's called the Mizzou Advantage. And, and uh, you'll learn more about that as these things roll out. The Mizzou Advantage is, uh, is an effort that the provost, Provost Foster, uh, initiated, I think he's been at it about three years now, taking a, uh, a very solid look at the university as a whole, at the strengths and the comparative advantages that we have as a university that few, if any, other institutions have across the country, few, if any, major state-funded uh, institutions. And they've identified these five areas that we have also identified as keys for extension. Uh, and in fact, the, the program directors have drafted some white papers to talk about how extension fits into these Mizzou advantages. The first one is food for the future. Kind of a, that's a kind of an obvious one, isn't it, for Mizzou? Uh, but clearly, we have a competitive advantage as a Midwestern major food producer, processor, and knowing something about the consumption of food uh, and the problems with the consumption of food uh, makes us very, very competitive in that area. New media. Well, when you've got the first journalism school and the Reynolds Journalism Institute and ag journalism and the kinds of things that we do in communication and extension, it makes some sense that the A. Mizzou Advantage would have something to do with media as the media business continues to evolve, I guess you'd say, or uh, converge or uh, in, some, in some cases probably uh, implode. Uh, and so new media will be something that's looked at. One health, one medicine, the convergence of human and animal health, that's in there. Well, if you stop and think about it, if you just look at the College of, uh, of the, the Kaffner Group and Animal Science Division and the Vet School and the Med School, just those three alone, you can understand that uh, that, that kind of combination of, of resources uh, gives Mizzou a real competitive advantage in health uh, as it relates to human health and animal health. Sustainable energy, we're in the process of kind of rebuilding our energy work in extension, uh, and there's some, some really good research going on uh, in that area as well, particularly with regard to bio uh, energy uh, and those kinds of things. So that makes a lot of sense. And then this one is, I think, one of the most interesting ones. I think this one is the one that the provost is not sure, you know, he, he has said all along that I'm not sure all these are going to develop. They're not all going to make into something that we think they're going to be. Some may fall out. Some may change, but I think this one is the most interesting at all. Understanding and managing disruptive and transformational technologies. And I think this one is the one that we really ought to grab hold of. Uh, because we've been involved in disruptive and translational technologies from the existence of extension. From the first corn club of 4-H to rural electrification, you name it. Uh, fescue work. Uh, uh, we've been involved in working on disruptive te technology for a long time. So I think we have a lot that we can do to participate in those. Uh, the opportunity will be for us to be sure that we're involved and engaged in the process, and you'll have an opportunity to help us do that, and that's important. Another one of these sort of three big things that I think we can be participating in that will help us as we come out of this uh, uh, economic uh, downturn uh, is to look at effective program delivery, to take a look at the things that make us key to the land-grant university system and mission. Uh, that's been critical, uh, I think, if you look back on our budget excitement in the last few months, in this last budget year. 
Uh, it will require strategic use of resources, thus the connection to strategic planning. Uh, and it must increase the use of technology, and I'm so pleased uh, that you've got that one. I think it's coming up maybe after this session to work on technology. The, the, the folks in Extension have been involved and interested in technology for a long time. And so that's, a, that's a, going to be a very important one. Some of the things that you know, that I know, and we've relearned maybe, or it's been reemphasized uh, in this last little budget exercise we've been through, is how important it is of, that we have local programming, localness, if you can use that term is very important in what it is we do. And so whatever we do in terms of effective program delivery, the localness component of it has to be a part of it. And so, uh, so we're going to take a look at that. You know, that really has started kind of in the, kind of looking inward at the budget process, and it's started with, with some discussions that the regional directors and, and Bev and I have had, and uh, we've had some conversations with the State Extension Council, and then just recently at the TLR meeting, uh, we, we talked about this some more. This is going to be a key thing for us to work on uh, in the future, particularly as it relates to the strategic planning effort. And the third thing that I want to talk about is stakeholder relations. Stakeholder relations is one that we uh, obviously knew we needed to continue to work on. Uh, we realized that when we prevailed on a, on a level budget, um, someone was saying, I can't remember this morning, that the new word in Jeff City is flat is up. Uh, so I guess you could say uh, we had an increase in our state budget this last year because it was flat. Uh, but one of the things we realized is how great a job you all did and how great a job Extension Council members did and other stakeholders in our organization did to communicate during that budget crisis who we are and what we do. And so we have an opportunity now to sort of build on that. Uh, and so there's some real, really good efforts being done in regions and, and, uh, and on campus and, uh, and, and other places to look at capitalizing on that. Everyone has a role to play. You all have been involved and we'll need to have you continue to be involved in working on political effectiveness, uh, in increasing interaction with stakeholders, with government leaders and decision makers to use the strong public value messages and what a, what a find that was in terms of an opportunity to, to learn about ways to craft public value messages. Uh, couldn't have happened at a better time, probably, uh, when we started work on that. And to work with constituency groups. Effective communication, looking at ways that we can take our web resources and communicate with them better uh, uh, by sort of maybe looking at them and consolidating those efforts. Program showcases, legislative workshops. We talked yesterday about candidate forums, where we can be an effective neutral broker in the communications process, not to lobby, but to communicate and articulate the education that we have to offer. So that's, uh, so that's stakeholder relations. So those are the big three things that I think if we all get engaged in during this time, uh, when we get through that process, and as we sort of continue to manage our resources, we'll be a stronger uh, organization, more poised really to go on and grow and continue to be effective in the state. Strategic planning, effective program delivery, and then stakeholder relations. Going to be keys for us, I think, really to take hold of that and, and do something with it. And uh, we'll need your help to do that. Now I want to uh, turn my attention and sort of update you on some other important uh, kinds of projects and processes. Speaking of tenacity, this one is one, <laughs> this one is one that we've had some tenacity on. I forget, uh, where's Marcia? Is Marcia here? She was here a minute. There she is. Is it 2005 we started the process? Marcia Alexander. Uh, I want to give you an update on that. And, you know, I've, it's, you talk about deja vu. Uh, it was last year's annual conference that I was sitting up here saying, you know, we're almost ready to make an announcement on the career ladder. We have, uh, we have it in good shape. We're about ready to get approval. There's just one little collective rules thing we need to get fixed before we can announce that it's been approved. Well, a long, long time has passed. Uh, we've done some changing on that document. We've engaged our faculty. We've engaged faculty governance on the, on the campus. And we've got a, a, a proposal that's been resubmitted to the provost. And you know what? It's just about ready to be approved. 
and there's only one problem with a little thing and collected rules. <laughs> and, uh, and I understand, I've, I've been told by Ken Dean, the Deputy Provost, that we may have an answer on the collected rules late this afternoon. Two or three of us are going to email him uh, soon, uh, this afternoon, and find out if it's got. But I really believe that we are closer than we were a year ago to getting that approved. Uh, and I think the, the, the collected rules thing is just adding some titles to an existing list. Uh, I think it will be approved, and I think we'll have a career ladder. Now, of course, the other side of that coin is that then the real hard work will, will begin. Uh, it'll, be a, uh, it'll be a big task uh, to go through the process of putting people in those ranks, developing the process to promote them through those ranks, and impact our hiring process so that we've got this career ladder, so that we can provide guidance for that hiring process so that we can offer opportunities for advancement to provide peer recognition for outstanding work uh, and, and really help, we hope, retain and attract good folks. Uh, it'll get at one of those things that I heard early on, and that is we don't have people that are paid well enough and that are recognized. So we're working hard on that. I'm, I'm, the, the optimist in me says that we may have an answer on that tomorrow. but. I've been optimistic about this one before, so I'm not sure. But I really do feel like we're about ready to get a, a, an answer on that. Another one that, uh, that we've been working on and some of you have heard about is uh, looking at CPD revitalization, County Program Director revitalization. It's been, I think, since the 1980s, since we've taken a kind of a comprehensive look at the role in that position. And work has been wor we've been working on that and kind of tried to figure out how it related, especially to effective program delivery. So we've kind of kind of crosswalk those just a little bit. But uh, certainly interested in ways to strengthen and reward recognition systems for CPDs, improving efficiency and effectiveness, encouraging and supporting the kinds of things that we want CPDs to be in terms of leaders uh, in their communities and innovation and leadership and career development. The, the group is working on a job audit because I think one of the things we realized as we got into that is the term CPD has a wide range of expectations and duties across our organization. And so this job audit, I think, will give data that the group can use to really uh, focus on continuing to work. And as I said, we want to try to, to try to crosswalk that with this effective program delivery that we're working on. So progress is being made on that, uh, and, uh, and uh, you'll, you'll continue to hear information about that. Our marketing effort uh, was going well with a task force pl in place uh, and at work, uh, and then we had this little budget issue. And this happened to be one of those projects that we sort of put off. Uh, my goal is to is to recrank the marketing efforts uh, and the marketing task force in the in the very near future. What they had done, I think, was very good work. They'd identified uh, some of the key areas that were needed for marketing some of the key products for marketing. This is organizational marketing now for our extension uh, uh, and training needs because I think one of the things we found and I think it was sort of revealed to us again in the budget situation is some of our best marketers are our people. Some of the best marketers are council members and other stakeholders uh, and our own faculty and telling people who we are and what we do. So the, so the task force will be oriented you know, to that. So uh, that's the, the big things, I think, in terms of budget, in terms of directions that I think the organization will go, will, will, should be going, and in terms of uh, some of those little projects that we're still working on that we're hopefully going to get completed uh, in the very near future. Uh, since the last time we met at the annual conference last, a lot has happened, hasn't it? A lot has happened to us in this organization. Uh, some really good things have happened. Uh, and I think even at the beginning of this talk, you'll, you'll, you'll agree that there's some really big challenges that have developed as well. Um, uh, when, when, uh, when we got, and I forget the date, January 14th, something like that, when the governor's message came out and we were looking at a 50% cut in our state budget, uh, we just, you know, we went to work on that as a team, as an organization, as, as a set of, as an extension family, because a lot of our customers and stakeholders really want to work on that. Uh, and, I, and I think if we take that spirit and carry it forward, you know, into the next year, we're going to really be in good shape. One of the things that we've, that we've said a little bit t today that I think is worth repeating is in January of this year, of, uh, January, I'm sorry, of the next year, January 10, 
we're not going to have things happen the same way they did in January of 2009. I don't know what the results will be, but the way we're responding to it right now and the way we've been responding to it this past year, our response will not be the same uh, as it was last year when we got our state budget. We're changing. We've changed. We've been through a lot, and we've prevailed. Uh, and the only way we would have ever done that uh, would have been because of you, because of the organization that's got a dedicated group of folks, a group of faculty that are sitting out here that own your jobs, are responsible for what you do, who work together, uh, who do quality work. Uh, and that's what's required. That's what you did, most of all, during the tough time we, we had. You continued to deliver effective programming. If we're going to come out of this recession, work that we do, work that you do, is going to be the mo some of the most meaningful work that we can do to help this state come out of that recession. I, I, I don't... I hope you realize how important the work that you do is to the state. Uh, and I'm just proud, uh, proud to be a part of this organization and proud to have you as, as employees of Extension. So thank you very much. And now it's time for questions. <laughs> or, you know, we can move on. But. I presume that you presume that you may have a question or comment. I'd be happy to try to answer anything that we talked about here or anything else that's on your mind. The, the question was when I started we were talking about the the uh, stimulus money, the stabilization money in the state budget. It's about 10% and uh, and I said about half of that won't be available. So the question is are we down 5%, 10%, 15%? <laughs> and and uh, what the, the way that uh, is working in the budget is that uh, the way the, the stabilization money was established, about half of the stabilization money is only one-year money. The other is two-year money. And so uh, if you look at the way they built that, uh, if, you, if everything were level and normal, we would automatically be starting at 5% below our budget. Uh, I think 5 to 10% is probably a better probably more like 10, because of the fact that the state budget, the state income is continuing to suffer. So I'm thinking 5 to 10. I'm not thinking 15. Uh, uh, but, you know, it, who knows? I mean, I don't think we found the bottom of our economy yet, so it's hard for me to say. But when I, when I, said, uh, when I said 5%, I meant that 5 plus maybe another 5 to start the discussion. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that uh, Bev is mentioning and, and, that, and I was getting ready to say as well is that uh, if you compare, uh, and I wasn't here then, but I, 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 we've had some discussions. If you compare our organization today uh, with the last time we had a, a major potential problem, which I think was about 02, uh, we're in much better shape financially than then in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, some reserves. Uh, in terms of control of our expenses. You know, we, we were asked by the president, the four campuses and extension, to cut our costs. And you know how we've done that. We've all suffered because of that, to some degree, professional development and other things. But we have cut our costs. We led the University of Missouri, uh, we led Mizzou and all of the system institutions in our ability to control our costs. We led them. And we caused Mizzou to be the leader among the system institutions of terms of controlling costs. So what I'm saying is with efficiencies and good management uh, and cash reserves and, and some held positions that you all know, we're in, a, we're in a better financial situation to take a cut than we probably have been in some time. So I, you know, if we're talking that kind of cut, uh, I feel relatively good that we can, we can handle that. You know, if it gets worse, I mean, there are those who, who can predict a perfect storm in 2012 that would just completely you could take the university down with a perfect storm like that. I'm, you know, that's when I get to be a little Pollyanna-ish. I just don't think it's going to get that bad. I think by the end of 2012, we're going to finally get out of this thing, and uh, we're going to be okay. But I, but I think we're going to have a couple tough years. I, just to be honest with you, I think we're going to have a couple tough years, both at the state and at the county level. But uh, we'll just have to wait and see. I think we can manage it. The key is to make sure we don't take a disproportional cut. The key is treat the University of Missouri Extension like the rest of higher education.
We're just going to have to stay after that message. Good question. That's an excellent question, and, and uh, it's one that we've spent a little time actually talking about even this morning. Um, I, think we, I think we have to re-communicate the message in some selective, targeted ways. Uh, and we, we're, uh, we, we haven't had an opportunity. We will have an opportunity Thursday and Friday to have this kind of conversation with the State Extension Council, which we plan to do uh, Thursday and Friday. Uh, the other thing that, uh, that uh, we are going to try to do uh, with David Baker's help, we're going to try to, uh, to visit with John Hagler uh, and try to send some, some messages to the governor through uh, the director of ag. We have a great relationship with John. Uh, he understands our partnership, and so we'll plan to do that. I think Friday we have that meeting with John. Uh, and then I, think, uh, you know, then I think the state council will need to decide, uh, as they do, because it's their business, uh, how they may want to re-communicate that to, to the governor, to, uh, to the president, to the chancellor. Uh, but that'll be their decision. And uh, I think uh, I think H.C. Russell's already the chair of state council's already thinking about that some. So uh, uh, there's, there'll be an opportunity for communication there. Uh, I think uh, one of the things that we that we heard uh, up at uh, Northeast, uh, Sunita had a. A really good session up in that area uh, with uh, with legislators. Uh, Representative Brian Munslinger said to us, and he was right on. Said, "Don't forget where the budget starts. Try not to get in. A, we need to try to not get in a situation we were in last year, where we had to fight the governor's budget. That's not a really good situation to be in. Of course, it took us by surprise, but it shouldn't take us by surprise again. So uh, we'll see how that turns out. But it's uh, on our minds, and it should be on all of our minds." One of the things that will help a lot this year is, is although you, you, evidently we were well positioned last year when we had the proposed cut, or we would not have been able to prevail. We were well positioned apparently last year, or we would not have been able to prevail over the, the proposed cut that we had. But one of the things that's been going on since that time is all of you in this room, and I believe all of you have been doing things to have additional interactions. That, that stakeholder slide that he talked about, <coughs> increased interactions, be more politically effective, all of these different things, different, you've had legislative workshops, you've had program showcases. There's been a lot of things that have been on the radar screen in the last six to eight months that we kind of did before, but now we're doing them in a very purposeful way, in a very upfront way and out front, and we have to continue to do that. Now, what I, what I will always say, you have to do good programming because we exist because we do good programming. So as you continue with your good programming and we add these other additional pieces where we're making better contact and we're more politically effective about our educational programs, that's going to help us. We have a Marty Otting, who has been the uh, government relations person uh, for the campus, for Mizzou, has added extension uh, to his portfolio. Uh, and we've been working with Marty. Marty's been very uh, interested in learning more about extension. Uh, you know, he, from at least from his own family background, has a pretty good handle on. Uh, he was an extension kid. He was a he was a 4 H or his family was involved in extension, so he knows that much. You know, we've been working hard to try to get him educated about all the breadth of extension, uh, and he's been a pretty willing a willing student about that. And so uh, we're, we're, we know and he knows that we've got some work to do, but he's been very helpful. Uh, he's been uh, 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 giving us some good information with regard to, uh, to some of the kinds of things we want to do, say, with candidate forums and so forth. He went to the legislative workshops. He was, he was at some of the legislative workshops. Uh, the other thing that I'll, that I'll tell you as well is that we've, is that we've have been able to bring, uh, we will effectively bring January 1st, uh, Jim Snyder in as a consultant for us uh, as we move forward uh, looking at uh, stakeholder relations mainly to help us with the stakeholder relations piece of those big three circles. So we'll continue to have input from Jim uh, for a time at least uh, and bring his expertise to bear particularly on the stakeholder relations and how it relates to those other big things, the, the, the strategic planning efforts and, and, uh, and uh, you know, those things that I think we really need to do uh, effective local, pro uh, local uh, effective program delivery, those three things. Good question. Well, we'll be around uh, and uh, look forward to the opportunity to visit with you some more. What a great looking program uh, you've got set up uh, coming up. Um, looking forward to participating in